LEDs will give an amazing look to any project. Remember the Daft Punk helmet with addressable LEDs. But now I have another project full of colors. I've made a tetris table with some cool features. The board is quite big, with a total of 128 RGB LEDs and a display configuration of 8x16. I've used the base code from Erginelli Selver and added a few extra parts. I've placed two 7 segment displays in order to show the score and the top score. The top score will be saved to the EEPROM memory of the Arduino, so it will stay there even if you power off the game. I've also placed a pause option, so you could stop the game and continue later. But one of the best improvements will be the sound option. I've used again the DF player with some MP3 files on an SD card and played the Tetris theme sound. It will also play some tones when you pause the game. Also when you lose, when you restart the game, and we also have a short beep each time that you complete the line. You could also now reset the game with the push button when you get the countdown. To move the pieces you could use the joystick or some push buttons. I've made the case with plywood and some acrylic parts, and still need some details in order to improve the look, but I think it's quite good for now. I'll maybe paint it with varnish and add some battle labels as well. So if you want to build this cool project, check the part list, the schematic and the code below this video and let's see what we need and the steps to build this. Playing this is quite fun, but building it is even better, and you could also learn a few new things. Make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell as well. Thanks to all my patrons for supporting my channel. So guys, let's get started. The sponsor of this video is JLCPCB. Thanks to all users' feedback, they are improving their services every day. Even this is your first time, ordering PCBs is very easy and all you have to do is to upload the Gerber files to JLCPCB.com. Select the settings that you want and you could get 5 PCBs of any color for only $2. What's up my friends, welcome back. Let's take a look at the finished Tetris table and then see how to build it. It can be powered from the main outlet, because we have a small power supply inside for 5 volts. So press the on button and it will start the game, and the Tetris theme song will play as well. So now you can use the joystick to move the pieces left and right, to accelerate downwards or rotate the piece. Press the pause button and the game will stop till you press that button again. At the same time the P letter will appear on the LED matrix and you will also hear the pause sound. Each time that you finish a line you will hear a very short beat from the buzzer, and 10 more points will be added to the 7 segment display. On the right display we have the top score, and this will be saved to the EEPROM memory of the Arduino, so it will be saved even if you unplug the game. In this way multiple players could try to beat your score. If you want, you could use the push buttons to do the same as with the joysticks. I will probably use these buttons in the future for a second game, so it's good to have these buttons as well. On the other side we have the USB input of the Arduino, and another toggle switch. You could use this switch to enable or disable the music. If we take a look inside, we can see the power supply for 5 volts, the Arduino Mega that will run the code, the DF player for the MP3 sounds together with a small speaker, and the display, the joystick and the buttons on the top plate. Below the acrylic part we have the matrix of 128 RGB addressable LEDs. And that means we could control the brightness and the color of each LED using just a single serial cable, and that makes this project a lot easier than using one cable for each LED or a matrix driver. I've already played a few games, and I can say it is really fun. Ok, so playing this is very fun, but I like building it even more. So let's see what we need to make this. Remember to check the part list, the schematic and the code below on electronoops.com and also on the new website electronoops.io. 
Ok guys, so we start with a piece of plywood of 5mm thickness. I'm using the WS2812 LED strip and the first thing that I do is to measure the distance between the LEDs. In this case it's 33mm. You have another type of LED strip with more LEDs and these are a lot closer one to each other, but I recommend you to use the one with fewer LEDs. I mark on the plywood a grid of 8 lines for the columns and 16 lines for the rows and separate it 33mm one for the other. Once I have the 128 squares, it's time to cut the plywood. I'm using a cutter to do that. So once I cut the part, I use some sanding paper to smooth the edges. Pass the sanding paper all over the sides. Ok, so now we have the main plywood base. You can check the final dimensions of this board below this video. In the same way, I cut 4 more parts for the sides. This will be as long as the board but with a width of 5 cm. You have to cut 2 long pieces for the sides and 2 more for the top and bottom parts. We have to leave a small part below the LED matrix as well since we will place the electronics here later. Now it's time to add the LEDs. Now take the strip and divide it into smaller strips of 8 LEDs each. You will need 16 strips of 8 LEDs. We have to place one strip on each row like this. Make sure that the strips are good size and fit ok on the plywood. But before we glue them in place, we have to cut a small part of the board so we could pass the wires on the other side. I mark the position of the strip more or less and then I cut a small part from the plywood. Now you should have 16 holes on each side like this, so now when I place the LED strip, it will be able to pass on the other side. So it's time to glue the strips. If you take a look from close, you will see that the strip has a small arrow on it. So this will show the direction of the serial data. Make sure that you place the strip like this. The first line with the arrow to the left. The second to the right. The third to the left and so on. This will be placed in the shape of an S. And the first LED will be here and the last one here. Each line of LEDs will have some glue on the back side, so you don't need any other kind of glue. Ok, so now that we have the LEDs in place, we can solder wires between the strips. We need 5 volts, ground and the data for each strip. To make the connections and since you guys always ask me about the thin wire that I'm using, well this is the wire that I have in all my projects. I will place an eBay link below if you want. For around 8 dollars you can get 300 meters of this 30 gauge wire of different colors. It's very easy to use and very thin, and for small signal is perfect. Ok, so we have to solder a red, one black and one green wire for 5 volts, for ground and data, from each line as in the schematic, each 2 strips. Now all the strips are connected, and to the first one I will solder some wires that will later go to the Arduino and the power supply. So with this the main board is ready. Now we have to make the squares that will deflect the light and give it a better look. But to do that I won't use plywood, but instead I will use this kind of foam that is used for RC plane modeling. It's very easy to cut and it is white and that will reflect the light even better. We need to cut 16 small strips and 7 long ones, and each of 4 cm width, because we need to subtract the thickness of the bottom plywood and the acrylic on the top from those 5 cm before. I mark the lines for all the strips and I cut 16 small ones and 7 long strips. Cutting this foam is very easy, just use a cutter once again. Ok, so now here comes the long and boring part of this project. In order to join the long strips with the short ones and create a grid, we need to cut a small part from each one. So 7 holes in the short strip and 15 holes in the long ones. So from this we get to this. So after more than 1 hour I have all the parts, so it's time to place the grid over the LEDs. Place the long ones and on top of that you can place the short ones. Once you complete the grid, you have to make sure that each line of foam is on top of the lines that we have on the bottom plywood. So once all is centered and in the right place, you can use just a little bit of hot glue and fix the foam grid in place. We need this grid to create a squared shape of the light from the LEDs because otherwise you will have just a spotlight and the colors from one LED will blend with the colors from the LEDs around and that won't look good. 
this grid with the acrylic on top will look a lot better. Once I have the foam grid for the squares, I can place the other pieces of plywood all around and create some sort of case. For that I use some hot glue for now and later I will add some wood glue as well. So the case is ready. Now we need the white acrylic part that will cover the LEDs. I have this huge acrylic board from an old drawer that I had thrown away, but I kept the acrylic part. So I mark the size of the LED grid on the acrylic part and cut it to size. Now I can cover the LEDs part and on the bottom part of the case I can place the rest of the electronics. Make sure that the acrylic part will fit ok inside of the case. And once the project is ready, we'll also glue this in place. Now I decide where I can place the power supply and the Arduino and cut some holes for that as well, for the main and the USB cable. And speaking of electronics, let's see what we need. You will need the Arduino Mega because the Uno has low memory and it is not enough for this project. For the supply I will use this small supply of 5 volts from the mains input of 230 volts. You will need of course the VS2812 addressable LED strip and you will also need one module of 7 segment display with the max driver. Then you will need a simple joystick and some momentary push buttons. The DF player to play the MP3 sounds and an SD card and maybe an audio amplifier but I finally decided to connect the speaker directly to the DF player because it was powerful enough. You also need an on and maybe an audio and all the connections. I first drill a hole and place the on and off switch and I solder some wires between this button and the power supply. On the other side I place the amplifier potentiometer but I will later change this with the toggle switch to enable or disable the sound and that's it. I solder some wires from the DF player just as in the schematic. I also solder the power and the data cables for the 7 segment display. I now check where to place each component inside of the case. Once again I've decided to remove the amplifier and add the toggle switch instead of that. Inside this case we will have the Arduino, the speaker, the DF player and the supply and on the top part we will have the 7 segment display and the push buttons on one side and the joystick on the other side. I put everything in place using hot glue or screws and make the connections using wires. Remember to download the mp3 files from below and upload that mp3 folder to the SD card and place that inside of the DF player. So now everything is connected. The supply will give 5 volts to these pads and from here we will supply all the modules. The buttons are connected to the Arduino, the 7 segment display as well and of course remember to connect the data pin from the LED strip to the Arduino as well. When you are ready check the connections once again. Then plug the USB and upload the code from below. Now unplug the USB cable, connect the main plug and power on the game. So this project is a success. The game will start and you will hear the music and be able to play the game. I recommend you to make some tests before you glue everything inside of the case. Because once the strip is glued, it will be very difficult to make changes without breaking something. So close the case and the game board is ready. As an extra you can add some labels for the start and pause buttons, you can paint the case and make it look a lot better if you want and have some extra time. But in my case this is the final look of my Arduino based Tetris game. I hope that you will enjoy building this project as much as I did and also play this game every once in a while. I can assure you that even this is an old game, playing it on a huge board is a lot of fun. Ok guys so I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new. If so give a like to this video. Remember that you have a full tutorial for this project on my website electronoops.com. Links are below. You can check the schematic, you can look over the code which will have a lot of comments in order for you to understand it better and also see the part list and order what you need for this project. Consider subscribing and activate the notification bell in order to see my future projects. Also a huge thank you to all my patrons for supporting my work. So thanks again and see you later guys.